Early in the 21st century, the Tyrell Corporation advanced robot evolution into the Nexus phase, a being virtually identical to a human, known as a replicant. The Nexus 6 replicants were superior in strength and agility, and at least equal in intelligence to the genetic engineers who created them. Replicants were used off-world as slave labor, in the hazardous exploration and colonization of other planets. After a bloody mutiny by a Nexus 6 combat team in an off-world colony, replicants were declared illegal on Earth, under penalty of death. Special police squads, Blade Runner units, had orders to shoot to kill upon detection any trespassing replicant. This was not called execution. It was called retirement. Los Angeles, November 2019. Eight short years from now. I sure hope not. I'm leaving now. Lucy, my sweet. I cleaned out the tiger cage and sorted all the meal bins. So, if it's all right, it's my turn to fix dinner. D uh, haven't you forgotten something, little one? Just one little thing. Mr. Renser, please. It's been a very long day. I don't want to. Now, Lucy, I thought we'd settled this last week. Don't let's forget who pays your salary. Ew. We're closed. Come back tomorrow. Wait, I haven't finished with you. I told you, we're closed. We're not here to buy, little man. We've come to sell. You can't possibly have anything to interest me. These are extremely rare animals of the highest quality. What a coincidence. So am I. That is the price for humility. Oh, please, don't. And what else might we interest you in today, sir? Perhaps some virtue? Uh, not my animals, please. I'm begging you. But what of honor, little man? At what price? Honor. Oh, my God, no! That tiger is the rarest specimen ever seen! Tiger, tiger, burning bright. The forest of the night. BR-61661, report to precinct headquarters. Code 3, repeat code 3. I was just finishing up my 12 out on patrol when I got the call. Welcome relief, considering that the most action I'd seen all night was a schizoid grandmother doing the shimmy in her underwear in the second sector. I'm sure glad we didn't get to see that. <laughs> Last time I had a three was when some hooker vomited Thunderbird on Bryant's desk, and yours truly led the cleanup crew. Year and a half on the job, it was still the dirtiest work I'd seen. Where's Captain Bryant? Took a sick day. Got himself a heinous case of tomaine poisoning. He asked me personally to run the unit in his absence. Guzo was one of the old time guys who took their knocks in the streets. He had a friendly way about him but you didn't want to turn your back on him if you were less than a friend. Hope you've been enjoying your leisure time, kid, because it's time to take that thumb out of your ass. Hallelujah. Don't get too excited. The other Blade Runners are all jammed up. Holden's sucking dinner through a straw. 
Gaff's working the Tyrell break-in, and Steele's working special undercover. Looks like you got this one by default. You really know how to make a girl feel wanted. Animal murder done at Runciter Zoological. Probably just be a schizoid glitz, but we got the call. Old man Runciter lost something like a billion chinions worth. Ten to one, this ain't a job for Rep Detect. You got something better to do? Perfect your French cooking, maybe? Slumming tonight, Slim? I thought you were on special assignment. Wasn't too damn special after I had the suckers out. What happened? A couple of fours were masquerading as fibroplast insulators down at Kaiser. I dressed up like a nurse, they never had a chance. I'll bet. You put them on the machine? Hell no. There's a beautiful little thing in here called the magic, and it ain't ever been wrong. You develop it, you got a brilliant career ahead of you. I'm working on it. What Scooza got you doing tonight? A.M. at Runciter's. Animal murder. Oh, those skin jobs got no respect for anything that truly lives and breathes. And that goddamn Eldon Tyrell ought to be zipped into a body bag and flushed into deep space. Get rid of him, we'd be out of a job. <laughs> I think we're all overdue for a little off-world paid vacation. You can stop staring at my ass now. You got eyes in the back of your head? All you gotta do is ask, Slim. <laughs> that an invitation? Animal sales was a profitable and prestigious business since most real animals had died out after the Terran War. There were plenty of electric ones, though, powered by rechargeable batteries. No self-respecting human would own one of those frauds. And there we are. Welcome, everyone to Let's Play Blade Runner. And I'm gonna pause it for a second there. This uh, game, made in 1996, was based, of course, on the 1982 Ridley Scott movie, uh, which in turn was loosely based on the 1968 Philip K. Dick novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Blade Runner was developed by Westwood Studios, a company not normally known for their adventure games. It's perhaps best known for pioneering the real-time strategy genre with Dune 2 and Command and & Conquer, but in this case they did make an adventure game, and they did a pretty good job with it too. Blade Runner, uh, in case you don't know, is set in the near future, 2019 in the movie, or in the case of the book, the distant future of 1992. Uh, and it follows the story of Rick Deckard, who is a special type of cop that specializes in hunting down and retrying these replicants, which are basically genetically engineered androids, artificial humans, that are used for slave labor, as the opening scroll said. As you may have noticed already, this game does not follow the story of the movie, but rather has its own plot that takes place at the same time. Personally, I think that was a good move. It means that the game designers have more freedom, and even if you know the movie, you still won't know the outcome of the game. We will, of course, see some references to events from the movie, as well as many familiar locations, and also some of the characters. One thing that this game is uh, famous for is its branching storyline. There are, if Wikipedia is to be believed, uh, 13 different endings. Which one you get depends on your choices during the game, but also on some things that are determined at random when you start a new game. One of the things that's determined at random is whether certain characters are human or replicant. And since I've just started a new game, uh, even I don't know which they will be at this point. Makes things interesting, at least. To deal with the different endings, uh, I will do the following. I will play through the game normally, making the choices I want to make, and then arrive at uh, one of the endings. After that, I'll go back, show you what you can do differently to get some of the other endings. I probably won't show every minor variation of every ending, but I will try to show the major different ones. And uh, some of them might be unreachable, depending on which characters are replicants, uh, but we'll uh, see about that when we get to it. For now, we can uh, begin. And actually, first I want to go into the options, and um, set the conversation uh, choices here to uh, user choice. Basically you can choose between either erratic, <laughs> I don't know why you would do that, surly, uh, normal and polite. You can change that at any point in the game. User choice just means that every single time there is a choice you get to make it um, at that point rather than having the game choose it for you. Designer cut is kind of picks uh, 
the choices based on how the designers want the storyline to play out. And uh, we're not going to do that. There are some other things here uh, worth noticing. One thing here is our ammo, um, which uh, currently we only have in the default bullets. Which uh, we have an unlimited supply of, because I think this is set to uh, easy. And we're going to leave it at that, because I don't like having to worry about how many bullets I have left. And we got some explanations here. Saving, loading, quitting. The normal stuff you might expect in the options. The other thing we have here actually is the Kia, which um, will be very important later, because it is a place where we uh, will collect everything we know about uh, crimes we're working on, all of the clues we've uh, we've collected, basically serves as a sort of uh, glorified inventory, and uh, also suspects associated to the crime, so you can sort of cross-reference all the information you get, both information you find and information uh, you get from the clue database at headquarters later, collected by other detectives. So that's an important uh, place to be in this game. And it seems that we are uh, here in order to investigate an animal murder. Animals are very rare, they died out, uh, most of them died out anyway, in the uh, World War Terminus, it was, is what it was called in the book, I think he just called it the last turn war, but anyway. So it's a prestigious business, and apparently uh, some replicants showed up and killed some of these animals. And considering this guy's behavior towards uh, that girl in the introduction, I think he had it coming, but... <laughs> Still, it's a bit of a shame about the animals. Anyway, we're tasked to uh, investigate, so let's do so. so maybe uh, we should start by seeing if anyone in the crowd knows something. Canvas the area. Maybe somebody had his eyes open. I'm on it. And he'll uh, let us know later if somebody knows anything. Uh, we could leave at this point, which we don't want to do. But of course we can go inside, but let's um, check around outside a little bit more. There seems to be something on the floor here. Find something? Piece of chrome. From a car? No, I think it's horse chrome. Bag it and tag it. Hmm. Horse chrome. Probably not all that uh, useful, or not all that likely, I mean. And now we have Chrome Debris in our Clue database. And we see that there are the uh, Crime Scene database now lists the animal murder and its associated clue, and we don't have any suspects yet. That will hopefully change in the next video.